Hi and welcome to my channel, my name is Magnus and today I was going to show you what you actually need to do to install the open server with Checkpoint. So first of all you need to check that it's within the hardware compatibility list and uh, Checkpoint has a list on their page and more or less you can go to HP. Me for example I will install it on a DL360 G10. So for a security gateway I either need to install it in R8020 in Gaia 310 or uh, R8030 Gaia 310 or R8040. So all of these three are supported for the gateways and for the um, management server it's the same you need to go you need to use R8020 or above. Then you can click on the specific model that you're using and you need to make sure that you have like this um, the storage uh, card. This is the interface that is tested with and this is how much RAM it's tested with. I normally have a lot more RAM than this um, and I normally have a lot more interfaces than only this. So if you want to add more interfaces you can go under add-on devices and supported and I have already selected HP and here you can see which port, how many ports you have, what type of speed it is and I normally put in like 25 gig NICs so then you have uh, this one for example or this one for example. I don't believe there is any more 25 gigs options. And of course they should be supported by HP so you need to verify and so on. But um, this for example um, you can run it on R8030 Gaia 310 and you can actually run it on R8020 Gaia 310. And what you want to check is that the NIC support uh, multi-queuing and uh, that you can do in um, in the community I guess it's easier but more or less you need to figure out like what type of driver is this card using I can show you that in a different video and there is actually one more SK that you need to be aware of and that's uh, 108200 required steps before installing Gaia OS on HP ProLiant Gen 9, Gen 9 and Gen 10 servers so more or less here, you need to make sure before installing Gaia OS that it's a part of the hardware compatibility list. That was the, the one that we just checked. And when it comes to like installing the, the boxes, Checkpoint actually don't support installation over ILO. Um, I think that's really bad, um, but you can install it with like a USB card. I normally install it via ILO because that's a lot easier and it's a lot more convenient if you're working remotely like I do. And what you need to keep in mind is if you're using USB cards, buy a few of them because sometimes it doesn't work. So just try a different vendor or, well, it's a lot tried and error if you want to use USB devices. I think it's um, complicated. So for the Gen 9 servers you need to do the following options, but I have a Gen 10, so let's scroll down. So this is for Gen 10. So we need to change the boot options and we need to change the legacy boot. So let's go into the ILO. And let's see if I have it paste. So this is my HP server. And what I need to do is uh, I need to go to the, the console so to say and sometimes it works with HTML5 sometimes it doesn't it's well it's annoying with this one uh, and then we use this one no let's see I want to reboot it so reset you want to reset yes and HP servers and servers in general they take a lot of time to boot and um, the more powerful they are, the actually longer they take to boot because they need to check like memories and so on. Well, and uh, here you got the option to see like um, what kind of service I'm using. Um, if you want uh, a bit more detail on why I pick specific servers and uh, how I spec them, well, yes, comment below and uh, maybe we can check on that later. So here we have the specs of the servers, so it's 192 gigs of RAM, but what I want to do is go into F9, System Utilities. So here you see I have 192 gigs of RAM, I have two CPUs, and uh, 
they are eight cores and it's uh, hyper threading enabled and we're actually going to turn off hyper threading and the reason for this is um, hyper threading is now supported from r81 or r8040 but then you need licenses for all the cores and if you use a hyper threading well then it's eight times two so you have 16 cores and uh, I actually only use eight core licenses, so I want to turn off the hyper threading. The real cores, I believe, are faster than the hyper threaded cores. And the reason why I have 192 gigs of RAM is because RAM is cheap and I'm running VSX. And um, well, there has been a lot of memory leaks in the last releases, so. Well, I feel confident to have a lot of RAM and I want to be able to have a lot of connections. And now with uh, uh, 64 bits within VSX for each VS, you can go above four gig per VS. So, well, it was cheap, so I bought it for them. So here is the system utilities that we are into. And uh, let's see here. So if we do like this. Can I fit both of them so we know what we need to do? Well, not really. We need to go into boot mode and we need to change legacy boot iOS. So let's see what that is. So the first thing that we need to do is to go into boot options. So let's see, I believe that's on the system configuration. And then we want to go into, uh, I guess BIOS. Yeah. So here we have the first one, boot options. And then we want to change the boot mode from UEFI. We want to change it to legacy BIOS mode. And we need to reboot the box before this is applied. So just uh, F10 for save. Yes, save changes. And what you need to do according to the SK is to reboot the server. So let's reboot the server. F12 and exit and reboot. Now the server is rebooting again and we will need to go into the BIOS again. Um, honestly, sometimes I skip rebooting between these steps, but um, let's follow the SK to the letter so we make sure that it's actually correct. So F9 again. So we see important information available, errors detected. Well, this is after we changed and the error they are referring to is the legacy boot option. So you see the this part, 289, a new network or source device has been detected. This is not shown, blah, blah, blah. That's the, the error, so to say. And we want to go into system configuration again. And we want to go into BIOS platform changes. And this time we want to change we want to change the BIOS platform configuration processor options. So let's go there. Uh, processor options. And first we want to turn off hyper threading because I don't have uh, I don't want to run hyper threading because I don't have licenses for it. Is this part of the SK? Um well, actually, yes. So you see here, Gen 10, hyper threading disable. And then we want to change to the processor to disable. And then we want to reboot it. So we want to change that to disable. And then we want to do F12 for save changes and reboot. And after this reboot, I want to show you a few more things because we want to set up the raids. We want to change the performance and power options. So we use high performance. And regarding the raid and so on, this is not part of the S case. This is just something that you need to figure out. Like, of course, you want to have raid so you don't lose data if you lose a drive. So let's press F9 again. You see here that the hyper threading has changed to disable. So what we want to do now is to go into system configuration and we want to go into the RAID card and we want to do uh, array configuration, I guess it is. 
and let's see if we have an array so we have no array yet so let's go back and create an array and we want to take both of our drives and just proceed to the next form and we want to have raid 1 raid 0 is just higher performance raid 1 is to have um, fault tolerance so they will act like one disk or it will be one spare so to say in raid 0 it will act like one disk and you will have the double the space but if one disk you lose everything so raid 1 when you have two disks and this is for the operating system this is not for like logs and so on and that's why we only have two disks because this is going to be a gateway and uh, just create whatever uh, name you want i don't care about the name and uh, this is the size and then just submit changes and we have the the logical drive is created successfully so that's perfect so after we have done the, the disk you see here that you can actually change workload profile um, i haven't tested this but you see like general throughput compute and you see like virtualization max performance and so on before there was an option like uh, under the processor options to do like maximum performance but maybe that's it i will not um, change this right now because uh, i'm not sure of the impact of all the other settings if i change something here so i will skip this and leave this for now now we have the boot options that is correct we have the the discs that are correct and we have uh, network boot options we don't need to care about and just as a side note here you can actually see like which uh, interface that we're using so we're using the 366 FLR we have the 562 SFP plus this is a 10 gig NIC and then we have this uh, 25 gig NIC and um, maybe you didn't see this but um, XXV710 um, it's not listed directly here so if you go under um, add-on devices and we go to HP and we do like 1025 gigs we have these ones this is the old name for it so if we click in here we can see this is the name the real name of it because this is an Intel chip so uh, XXV710 and uh, that's the name we have there as well. Just, um, I don't know, Curiosa, we call it in Swedish, um, like um, uh, some additional information. We were actually part of certified this uh, DL360 Gen 10 servers because uh, we needed to, to buy this Gen 10 servers and uh, we were in a situation where we couldn't order Gen 9 servers and they were the only one that was supported and we really wanted to have Gen 10. So we did run uh, EA code uh, for the R8030 uh, 310 release. So that was really cool. So it's, it's nice to be a part of the development for the product as well. So we did have a lot of chats with R&D to like specify how our servers, how we wanted to have our servers and R&D purchased very similar service to, to really uh, certify them because a lot of service providers is using uh, HP servers, at least here in Sweden, uh, instead of appliance boxes because you have a lot more flexibility when you do open servers and you can change the boxes quite frequently. But, um, well, this is, um, now it's fully supported so you can use it um, as you want. And uh, our settings in ILO is done. So it's more or less only to install it now. So press exit because we have saved everything. So exit, uh, do you want to exit and resume normal boot? Well, yes. So if we want to install this now then, well, then we need to have either a USB drive or we need to have um, to use the ILO. The ILO is not really supported, but um, well, I will do it that way anyway. So you see here, you're trying to boot from the Nix, you're trying to boot from like PXC, you're trying to boot from the, the drives and so on. If you have a USB, well, then you need to uh, 
it will pick it up and it will boot it because we are in the legacy BIOS bootable thingy. It will loop through this until it finds something to boot from. So let's give it something to boot from. So this one, CD and uh, DVD, local ISO file. And I did just download an R8030 um, image. So now the media is inserted. So hopefully during this boot loop, it will find its way to boot from the, from the DVD. So I did press F9 here because the boot loop didn't work. So let's go into the boot options. Let's see if we can boot from the, um, the DVD. So we're going into F9 to just change it so it boots from the DVD instead of uh, trying to boot from discs and so on. And we want to go to the one time boot menu and uh, legacy and just press enter. And let's hope we see something here. And we want to boot from the CD, so let's press uh, 1. And uh, here we have it, install Gaia on this system. And uh, I will stop this video here, and if you want to see how to install a Gaia um, installation and do the gateway installation, I will put the card in the description below and uh, above here. Thank you for watching. I hope you did learn something. If you did, please like, share, comment below what you want to see next and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.